cloud support engineer here at the AWS office in Sydney. Sometimes I speak to customers who want their public-facing ELB to load balance EC2 instances with private range IP addresses. Thanks to network address translation, NAT, you don't have to expose the instances directly to the internet when you want them to serve web content with a load balancer. Let me walk you through the process of setting up an example VPC and an ELB. As you can see, I'm already signed into the AWS Management Console, and I'll navigate to the VPC console. Click on the Start VPC Wizard. Select the second option on the left-hand menu, VPC with public and private subnets. Enter a name for your VPC. Choose the same availability zone AZ for both the public and the private subnet, so the ELB and the EC2 instances can communicate with one another. In this example, I'll choose AP Southeast 2B for both. The remaining settings on the section can be left as is for the purpose of the video. Public subnet will have the range of 10.0.0/24. Private subnet will have the range of 10.0.1.0/24. Choose an elastic IP address for, for the NAT gateway and click on Create VPC. Wait a couple of minutes for the process to complete. The wizard will create the subnets, route table, default security group, and NAT gateway for you. As you can see, the VPC was created successfully. Now let's create the ELB. Navigate to the EC2 console. Click on Load Balancers. And then click on Create Load Balancer. My example VPC is in one availability zone only, so I'll choose the classic load balancer option, ELB. I'll name the ELB. Under Create LB Inside, select the new VPC. I'll leave the default port 80 listener as is. Scroll down. At this point, we can choose which subnets to use. The ELB must be accessible from the internet, so let's place it under the public subnet. Click on the plus sign next to the public subnet 10.0.0.0/24. Hit next. Now let's create a security group for the ELB. Select Create New Security Group. Port 80 TCP is selected by default for HTTP traffic. You can click next. Acknowledge the security warning and click next. Let's accept the default health check values and hit next. We're asked to add EC2 instances. We don't have any yet uh, in the new VPC. We'll do this later, so hit Next again. And add any optional tags. Hit Review and Create to review your setup. Hit Create when done. The ELB was created successfully. At this point, we have an ELB with no web servers behind it. To test this classic load balancer, let's go ahead and create a couple of basic ones. Back to the EC2 console. We'll launch a new Tier 2 micro instance with Amazon Linux on it. You can hit the next button until you reach Configure Instance Details. The number of instances can be set to 2. Under the Network drop-down menu, select the newly created VPC. Below, select the private subnet from the subnet drop-down menu. The value for auto-assign public IP should be set to disable. Our instances will have private IP addresses only. Note that while you will not be able to connect to them using SSH from the internet, you can connect to them from other hosts in your VPC. I'll be passing a basic script to the instances to install the Apache web server and add a basic test web page. You can do this with user data. Scroll down and expand the advanced details section. Enter the following lines into user data. As you can see, this basic user data script installs the Apache web server, enables it to start automatically the next time you boot, starts it right now, and it also creates a basic test web page that contains the EC2 instance's hostname. Click on the next button until you reach Configure Security Groups. Our VPC has a default security group. It's configured to allow all the traffic in the security group itself. This is enough for our needs. Our web servers need to be able to communicate directly only with the ELB, not with the outside world. 
tick the box next to the default security group, review and launch, and then launch with your existing private key. We now have two new instances with private IP addresses with the pattern of 10.0.1.x. As you can see, they take a few moments to fully create. Let's go back to our load balancers and add the EC2 instances. Click on load balancers on the left hand pane. Click on actions, edit instances. Check the boxes next to both of the instances and then hit save. To allow the ELB to talk to the web servers, click on actions, edit, security groups. Check the box next to the default security group, which allows all traffic within hosts in the security group. Save the changes. If you accepted the default health check values earlier of 30 sec interval and healthy threshold of 10 health checks, then it will take five minutes for the process to complete. This depends on the health check values you set up earlier on the ELB. After five minutes, open a new browser tab and navigate to the ELB's endpoint. Refresh the page a few times. It will display the host names of your web servers, which consist of the private range IP addresses of the instance. To recap, we now have two Apache web servers running on EC2 instances, which are not exposed to the web behind a public ELB. It's best practice to add HTTPS support and an SSL certificate to your ELB. Review our documentation on this topic. Thanks for watching and happy cloud computing from all of us here at AWS.